John Wallace, Wild Game Cook. We're going to be making some goose pastrami. Stay tuned. A lot of these ingredients can be interchangeable. Uh, some can be optional. Uh, one of the hardest things to find uh, that you typically don't have in your house is your pink curing salt. I bought some off of Amazon years ago. This is a two pound bag um, and I've still got more than half of it. It goes a long way. Definitely worth buying a bag of this. I use it a lot for pastrami, but also use it for jerkies from time to time. Um, brandy. Um, the only reason we have brandy in the house is for this recipe. Um, and do a little bit of cooking otherwise. You want some kosher salt, celery seed, some mustard seed, some ground coriander or whole coriander. We're going to go with some uh, cracked black pepper. We've got our goose. We're going to measure it out so we know how much cure to use. Um, and how much seasoning. First things first, we're gonna trim up these goose breasts and get them ready to go for the brine. Anytime I'm working with goose breasts, no matter what I'm typically making, I look to get this large chunk of membrane off the back corner where it attaches to the wing. Um, it's very, very thick silver skin. I simply just like to go in underneath of it and then come back this way and make kind of a V. I'm not looking to get rid of all of it. I'm just looking to get rid of the majority of it. That's all we're looking to remove right there. Just makes for a cleaner uh, tasting and a cleaner eating bite right there. We're gonna go ahead and remove any fat, any major blood spots, any feathers that still may be attached to the meat. Uh, just try to make these as um, clean as possible going into the, to the brine. Once we get it trimmed up, We'll put it in our bowl and that'll give us an accurate weight. As I've had these sitting in the fridge for a couple days, I layer paper towels in between them to make sure they drain out very good. Just helps with better tasting goose uh, and generally, most times, all wild game. We're going to finish trimming up the recipes. We'll see you at the next step. All right, so we've got our goose breast cleaned up. Uh, we've got our scale zeroed out. We're going to drop it on there. We're actually about five pounds right on the nose. Um, I've got some notes on the back of my pink curing scalp. We'll grab that and uh, we'll see how much cure we need. Generally, we get into geese. If we get a limit or we get a good bunch of them, um, I've kind of just got some metrics here figured out. Um, for about four and a half pounds of goose meat, it's about a teaspoon of cure. Um, for seven pounds, which is about uh, a, a limit here in Ohio, which is five birds, that's 10 breasts, it's about seven pounds. Uh, you're looking at a teaspoon and a half. Um, it doesn't take that much cure, uh, but you do want to make sure you have enough, but not too much. Uh, so we're probably just going to go ahead and go with just a little over a heaping teaspoon of cure uh, along with our brine. We're going to go ahead and make our salt cure, our salt brine for our goose pastrami. This recipe calls for about a tablespoon per pound of goose breast. So again, we've got five pounds. We're going to go with five tablespoons of kosher salt, not table salt. And this is going to hit our little uh, spice ninja here. You can put it in a food processor. We're then going to go ahead and add two tablespoons of fresh cracked pepper. We're going to add one teaspoon of caraway seed. Then going to add one teaspoon of celery seed. We're going to add two tablespoons of sugar. Last up, we're going to add the pink curing salt. Again, we're going to add just a little over a teaspoon. There's a heaping tablespoon of pink curing salt. What we're going to do is we're just going to shake all this up to get it well incorporated. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and stick it on our uh, blender here and go ahead and make sure it's all well incorporated. Now 
Give it a good shake, make sure everything kind of gets moved around. All right, that looks to be pretty well incorporated. We're gonna go ahead and massage this into each individual goose breast and put them in our container. And we're gonna cover them and put them in the fridge. I did forget to add our thyme. So we're gonna add one teaspoon of thyme to this and shuffle it up. We'll go ahead and throw on a couple of gloves just to keep from getting messy. I can massage it into these breasts really well. So we've got our cure, we've got our container. We're gonna to try to fit all of these in this container. We're gonna cover it, put it in the fridge for I'd say at least 36 hours. Um, you don't need to go much more than that. Um, if they're very small geese, 24 hours may do. Uh, we've got some small geese in here, some large geese in here. Uh, we just wanna ensure that cure gets all the way to the center. You can throw some of this in there. Again, we're just wanting good coverage on each one of these breasts. You can massage it in, get into all the little nooks and crannies. That's it. We're going to do that for all of these. Want that cure to get good contact to the goose breasts. You could use ground pepper uh, with this recipe. I prefer the coarse, fresh cracked pepper. It just adds a flavor bomb to this and gives you nice, uh, gives you nice flavor. All right, we've got all of these in this dish. We're gonna go ahead and cover it, put it in saran wrap, and we're gonna give this about a day and a half to ensure that that cure sets in. We'll see you back then. There we go. All right, it's been about a day and a half. We've got our pastrami. You can see that there. You can see it's dried up, tacked up a little bit. Uh, we're simply just gonna take this out. We're gonna give it a really good wash. Every individual piece of meat, we're just gonna wash it, clean it really good, and get that cure off of there the best we can. Once we're done washing it off, we're just simply going to put it on our drying rack. Sometimes like you're plucking a goose or something, I kind of like to roll my fingers uh, to get some of that to come off of there. Again, you don't have to get all of it off, but it's, it's a good idea to get as much as you can. got three done we're gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of these and we'll show you the next step we've thoroughly washed each individual breast now we're just going to simply take a paper towel kind of help the drying process we're just going to pat it dry on both sides again we're looking for any residue that may be left over from the cure we're just simply going to dry each one of these and we're going to stash it in the fridge overnight for 36 hours We've got them all padded dry. We're gonna stash them in the fridge uncovered and we'll see you back at, uh, in about 24 to 36 hours. We're back. We've got our goose out of the fridge. You can see it's developed a nice pedicule. Just got a little bit of a sheen to it. Uh, it's gonna help our binder stick. It's gonna help smoke adhere to it better. We've got our smoker fired up. We're preheating it now to 160. We're setting it on a smoke setting of seven. Um, our binder is simply gonna be a half a cup of brandy. If you prefer not to use brandy, red wine would work, water would work, beef stock, some sort of stock would work just fine. Uh, this adds a sweetness, adds a nice layer of flavor to the dish. 
for our spice rub, we're gonna go with three and a half tablespoons, four tablespoons of black pepper. As long as it's a one-to-one -one mixture of black pepper and coriander, you can use fresh, fresh cracked black pepper. Um, it really gives it a lot more pungent taste. We've got our ground coriander. For a little bit of color, a little bit of spice, on a little bit of texture, we've got some crushed whole pepper seeds. So we've crushed them a little bit in our food processor. Some are crushed, some are not, that's fine. So we're simply gonna mix this up. We're simply gonna take each goose breast, we're gonna plop it down into our brandy, make sure it's good and covered, and we're gonna lay it in our dry rub. That's it, ready for the smoker. We're gonna do that with all eight of these, and we're gonna head out to the smoker. We've got all these with the rub on, we're gonna go ahead and move them out to the smoker, We've got two probes out there. We're gonna go ahead and take one and put it in one of the larger ones. And we're gonna take another probe and put it in one of the smaller ones because they're gonna finish a little sooner. We're shooting for a target temperature of 145. Uh, should take about two to three hours. It is blistering cold outside. We've got one of our first cold winter fronts of the year here in Ohio. Um, but that's the beauty of having that insulated blanket out there on the Camp Chef. Uh, we're gonna get these on the smoker and now we patiently wait. We're already up to temp. Uh, just got three minutes into the cooking process here for it to do that. We've got our meat probe. We'll grab one of these big boys. Try to make sure it's right in the thick of the, the, the fattest part there. Take one of our smaller ones. pretty good about that. There can be hot spots in your smoker, so make sure every once in a while, after maybe an hour or so, you take these and you move them to the front, you move them to the center. Uh, typically the center of my grill is the least hot, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these just kind of in the front row, back row. I may rotate them just to 180, uh, just to make sure that they're cooking evenly. Got this nice little tender here, we're just gonna try that out. That may be done here in not too long, so a little treat for us. But that's it, we can monitor the probe setting inside if we need to from our app on our phone. We can always just come out here as well and keep checking our probes. Right now we're sitting at 44 degrees uh, internal temp of these goose breasts. We want to give them to 145, so we've got 100 degrees to go. All right, we've got our larger ones here have hit 140. We're going to go ahead and pull them. We've got our largest one yet here is at 135. We're gonna go ahead and bring these inside, show you the rest of the process as this one's finishing up. To say we've been in here snacking on the first couple that came off the grill, I'd be lying to you if I wasn't. Uh, but yeah, we've got them all pulled off. We've got one more out there still finishing up. Um, when you pull them off, they should have just a little bit of give to them. Um, again, you think about a, a medium, medium rare steak, uh, you're gonna have a little bit of play. As it's been off the grill for a while, it will firm up. Uh, but yeah, when you get into the middle of these, the one thing you want to look for is whether or not the cure has made it to the middle of the pastrami. So we can see here that the cure has most definitely made it to the center. Uh, we've got a great texture here. Again, we shot for 140, 145. You can cut this into chunks. You can cut it into slice, uh, slices, whatever you like best. For me, I like to cut it into small slices. Uh, this is absolutely amazing. It's got the right amount of salt. Got a little bit of kick from the black pepper. Funny enough, a little bit of spice from the mustard seed. Um, what I like to do with these is freeze them whole, back seal them, and give them to landowners as gifts. Give them to those that I, I, I get invited to go on hunts with. I'll give them to them as thank yous. Take them as blind snacks. Um, they're unbelievably delicious uh, for goose. A lot of people wouldn't even believe it's goose. But yeah, you simply uh, back seal them whole, Eat them warm right off the grill, eat them cold, warm them back through, uh, delicious. Goose pastrami is definitely a must try for any waterfowl hunter. Give it a shot. Check it out at MidwayUSA.com. Want some Rhonda? Good girl.